हेलो फ्रेंड्स वेलकम बैक टू माय यूट्यूब चैनल आई एम डॉक्टर विजय गोविंदा गुप्ता एंड्रोलॉजिस्ट और अ सर्जन फॉर मेन डिजीजेस इन न्यू दिल्ली इंडिया एट माय क्लिनिक आई ट्रीट एंड डायग्नोज ऑलमोस्ट एवरी स्पेसिफिक मेल कंडीशंस लीडिंग टू प्रॉब्लम्स इन जेनिटेलिया सेक्स और जैकुलेशन टाइम्स टूडेज टॉपिक इज अबाउट हाउ टू ट्रीट अ टाइट फेनलोम एंड अ टाइप ऑफ फेनलो प्लास्टिक दैट आर अवेलेबल टू मेक दिस कंडीशन ट्रीटेबल फॉर एनी काइंड ऑफ टाइट फेनलोम what is a frenulum why a tight frenulum can cause problems and how to diagnose a tight frenulum has been covered in detail by me in a previous video the link of which is given down in the description as well as in the cards on the youtube channel today we are going to talk about the three specific types of frenuloplasties that we do now the frenuloplasty basically means that we have to cut the frenulum elongated but it doesn't look as simple as it is because one the frenulum site the frenulum for all practical matters is basically a blood vessel so to cut it and restitch it entails a lot of bleeding so to do a good frenuloplasty we have to take care of a few things the frenuloplasty should never be tight we have to reorient the tension lines so that the frenuloplasty never ever proves to be a pain again in those men who have a frenulum problem leading to premature ejaculation we need to make sure that the nerves or the sensitive nerves feeding the frenular area are also excised so as to lead to resolution of their ejaculation problems then we need to make sure that the cut edges heal perfectly because the frenular skin or the frenular mucosa is so friable we have to minimize the use of electric current or cautery so whenever i do a frenuloplasty in my practice we take care of the following things we make sure that we use as minimum of energy sources or cautery so as to not lead to necrosis of the cut edges to give you a cosmetically superior incision and a cosmetically superior healing we try to use as small or uh, sutures as possible uh, as fine the sutures as possible so as to not leave you uh, scar marks and we try to do the procedure in a way that prevents as minimum of bleeding for you now the frenuloplasty can be done in three methods it completely depends upon how tight your frenulum is what is the orientation of the frenulum is the frenulum the base of the frenulum wide enough is the frenulum uh, has if somebody has done a frenulum in the past and we need to revise it if you are circumcised or not depending on these factors and after an examination we would be able to choose the best frenuloplasty method for you first i will describe the traditional or the diamond shaped frenuloplasty this is the most commonly done frenuloplasty it is usually valid for most patients and it is the easiest to do in this frenuloplasty we basically detach the frenulum from the tip of the pee hole or the meatus and extend the frenulum down for about an, about half an inch uh, uh, towards the penile base the problem with this frenuloplasty is that when we resect and we bring down the frenulum in this way we lead to a defect which is a diamond in shape so normally when we stitch these edges together there is some reduction in the circumference of the foreskin if you already have a pre existing phimosis and you undergo only a frenuloplasty with the phimosis not treated this can actually lead to precipitation or actually lead to secondary phimosis causing problems in some men so diamond shaped frenuloplasty is usually best for very uh, not very tight frenulums in which there is no phimosis at all so this is usually the uh, frenuloplasty reserved for these patients usually after the diamond cut has been made we stitch the edges together uh, with one or two fine absorbable sutures and these sutures usually fall away on their own in this diamond shaped frenuloplasty now a modification called as a stitchless frenuloplasty has also been done in which instead of suturing the edges together we use something called as a tissue glue or a cyanoacrylate glue to fuse the edges together allowing the patients no stitches at all but again that completely depends if your edges are not too long and the frenulum is not too long then there are certain frenuloplasty techniques that have to be utilized in those patients in which we have to revise the frenulum do a frenulum all over again they are circumcised in the past the frenulum length is too much that we need to make the frenulum too long um, they have glanced defects or they have defects in the meatus the pee hole is not in the correct position patients with additional hypospadias patients with additional phimosis so in these cases there are technical modifications that can be done one is a vyplasty 
In V-Vyoplasty, instead of making a diamond shaped cut, we make a V-shaped cut, we extend the frenulum edges down and then stitch the frenular edges in a, in a Y shape. This allows not only the lengthening of the frenulum but also widening of the phimosis in some cases leading to preservation of the foreskin to avoid a circumcision. Sometimes we also do something called a Z-plasty if sometimes the frenulum is too short and we need to elongate the tissues for a considerable distance we may need to do multiple Z-plasties to extend the frenulum and in these cases up to an inch or even more length in the frenulum can be gained. Sometimes we may use even more complex reconstructive procedures like taking in a tissue graft, uh, making an island flap from a re residual mucosa, combining Z-plasties and V-plasties together to allow you to have a good frenulum without any problems of uh, ejaculatory, ejaculatory problems or painful erections and so. So if you are suffering from a tight frenulum, it is very important that you discuss your issues with an andrologist who is capable and who has experience in managing all kinds of cases so that on table he is not left with an option of leaving you scarred. So if you are living in New Delhi or living uh, around New Delhi or if you want to take an opinion from me or a surgery uh, from me in India, you can always contact me on YouTube, you could call my helpline numbers, you could contact me on email or on Facebook and I would be ready to help you and help you diagnose the condition as well as give you advice on what you need to do about it. Thank you for listening to my video uh, and please subscribe to my channel.